Thank you.
I would like to welcome the audience to the October 20th, 2020 Parish Planning and Zoning Board meeting. <clears throat> would you please stand while uh, Coastal Saul Williams says the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance? Allowing us another blessed day. Yes, the presence of the Holy Spirit in this meeting tonight. And thank you for allowing us another opportunity we pray for this board and pray for this staff. We pray for all of those who suffer throughout the land, those from the storm and the various. Have mercy upon them as well. And we know you'll never leave us. We pray for those who come tonight seeking our help and advice. That the Holy Spirit guide and lead us as it might do that. She's pleasing in our sight. This we offer today as our prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't see the flag. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Christy, would you please call roll? Chair Smith. Here. Vice Chair Julia Dickerson. Here. Ms. Latricia Cobb. Here. Mr. Keith Dubrov. Here. Ms. Sharon Galicia. 
Here. Ms. Janelle Hyatt. Here. Mr. Art Little. Here. Mr. Jake Corshay. Here. Mr. Carl Vincent. Here. Mr. LaSalle Williams. Here. And Ms. Deanne Whitey. Here. Thank you, Christy. Our procedures have been adjusted to follow social distancing protocol. This is an 11 member board. It will take a majority of those members present to grant or deny any request heard tonight. The chair will refrain from voting unless the vote might affect the outcome. The meeting will be conducted with me reading the request from the agenda. The planning staff will give a presentation and report their recommendations. If the applicant would like to add to the staff's presentation, or if someone from the audience has comments, they will need to fill out a blue request to appear form located on the round table in the lobby. The form must be given to a staff member prior to the reading of the agenda item. <clears throat> when it's your turn to speak, you will be asked to proceed to the second floor meeting room. Please come to the microphone and state your name, address, and the nature of your request. As required by this board's bylaws, in all cases, the proponents will be limited to 10 minutes. Opponents will be granted 10 minutes as well, with each speaker allowed no more than three minutes. I recommend that a spokesperson be selected if there is a large group wanting to speak on the same agenda item. If four or more speaker request forms are submitted, the time allowed for individual speakers will be limited based upon the number of forms submitted. The chair has the right to limit speakers who present redundant information or personal attacks. In unique situations, the chair may extend or the board may vote to extend the time allotted for speakers. After discussion, the board will vote on each request. I will announce the decision of the board after the vote. The exception and variances are final tonight. The rezoning cases will go before the police jury for the final action on October 22nd, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. This meeting will be filmed by the Calcutta Parish Government Channel and can be viewed on Wednesday and Thursday following the meeting. For additional run dates, check the website at www.cppj at calcasieuparish.gov, Channel 5 in Lake Charles, Sulphur, Moss Bluff, Westlake, Vinton, De Quincey, and Gillis, Channel 99 in Carlos and Grand Lake. Please use the turn all for silence all electronic devices. Take appropriate action on VAR-0820-0141, a request by Dustin Dixon for a variance to allow a dwelling with less than required square footage, required 43,560 square feet, requesting 26,476.68 square feet in the 900 block of Goodrich Road in Ward 4. I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions Moved by Ms. Cobb, motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Ms. Hyatt, Ms. Tun. This property is located in the Carlos area and encompasses 0.61 acres of agricultural zone land. The property was recently divided and donated to Ms. Dixon by a family member through a secession. If approved, Ms. Dixon intends to place a manufactured home on the property to reside in. Because the proposed density is consistent with the character of the area, the staff recommends the request be granted with the following conditions. That the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development, provided that the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during development, and that the manufactured home must be skirted prior to utilities being connected. Thank you, Ms. Tun. Is the applicant present for and would like to comment? No. Uh, there's no blue cord on the issue. Uh, any questions or comments by the board? All those in favor, state aye. 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 All opposed? There being none, motion passes. Item six, take appropriate action on VAR-0820-0142 a request by West End Subdivision LLC for a variance to allow a premise subdivision to allow premise subdivision signs allowed one sign requesting three signs and to allow subdivision signs to exceed the maximum square footage allowed 32 square feet requesting 60 square feet in the 2900 block of West Houston River Road in Ward 4 I will entertain a motion for approval 
with conditions. So moved. Motion by Mr. Little, second by Ms. Hyatt. Ms. Tone? This property is located in the North Sulphur area in a newly adopted West End subdivision. The developer recently constructed three monument signs that exceeded the maximum square footage for the newly adopted subdivision at three entrances. Because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends the request be granted with the condition that the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development, provided that the, the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during development. Thank you, Ms. Tone. I guess, uh, does the applicant have anything to add to the staff's presentation? And not being here, we can't see them, so I don't know that. <laughs> Um, any questions or comments by the board? All those in favor, state aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 7, take appropriate action on VAR-0920-0143 a request by Rhino Property Developers, Inc. for a variance to decrease the front yard setback requirements on 55 lots required 30 feet, requesting 20 feet in the 2100 to 2299 block of Moundville Street, 2100 to 2299 block of Maidwood Street, 4900 block of Maple of Myrtle Hill Street, and the 4900 block of Poplar Grove Street in Ward 4. I will entertain a motion for approval with condition. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Ms. Hyatt. Ms. Tun. This property is in the Carlos area within the shadows at Bayou Oaks subdivision. The applicant is requesting a front yard setback variance from 30 feet to 20 feet on 55 lots to construct new homes. Because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends the request be granted with the condition that the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development provided that the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during development. Thank you, Ms. Tun. Does the applicant have anything to add to the staff's presentation? After not being here, uh, there's no blue cards on this item. Um, any questions or comments by the board? Yes, sir. Is there, uh, is there some reasoning? I mean from the 20 to the 30, because I know there are homes built out there on the subdivision. Um, Mr. Little, I, I'm not sure if he actually gave a reasoning, but I think the, the design of his home, they're trying to bring them closer up. Uh, they may have some patios that have stairs that go down and to maybe sidewalks. Okay. So they're trying to bring them closer up to the... Right. And, that and that's what... They've got some very nice homes, yeah. and they've got the... It's, they're raised, and they've got the long steps, so that does make sense. Yeah, it, it just... Uh, it's it's really conducive sure. to the design of their homes that okay. they're constructing out there is why they're... Thank you. Request. I have a question. Yes, sir. If they... In front of these <coughs> homes, if they're going to gonna move them up 10 feet, tw is there... Is there going to be a ditch, or what type of drainage is in front of there, or is the road supposed to be the drainage? Um, I think I don't. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's underground drainage in that in that area. So there's there's not a ditch or anything that. Well, uh, sometimes you see them. Right. Have a canyon in front of the road. So. No, this is it's all yeah. underground drainage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does the applicant have anything to add to this? I know they're not here, but at least we're, I'm assuming they're downstairs. <laughs> uh, we have no blue cards on this item, by the way. Uh, any other questions or comments by the board? Uh, all in favor, state aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item eight, <clears throat> take appropriate action on EX-08 20-0086, a request by Jason Giot for an exception to allow a borrow pit 0.23 acres in a R1 single family residential zoning district at 6813 Desitel Road in Ward 3. 
I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Motion by Ms. Dickerson, second by Ms. Hyatt. Ms. Tom. This property is located in South Lake Charles area and encompasses one acre of single family residential zone property. The applicant intends to dig a pond and remove 70% of the dirt. While 30% of the dirt will be used to build up the property around his existing home and on an adjacent lot. Because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends the request be granted with the following conditions. That the development must be in accordance with section 26-122-1H4I-XII of Calcasieu Parish Code of Ordinances. That a road damage bond and the amount determined by the parish engineer must be submitted to the Division of Engineering prior to the issuance of a development permit. That a runoff management plan will be required unless appropriate waiver is granted by the Division of Engineering. And that the hauling must be completed within 18 months of approval. Thank you, Ms. Tillman. I guess we have to offer the applicant the opportunity to speak if they wish to. And they're downstairs. There are no blue cards on this item. Um, any questions or comments by the board? There being none, uh, all in favor, state aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? There being none, motion carries. Item nine, no action necessary on EX-0820-0087. A, a request by Bradley Deal Edux for an exception to allow residential development manufactured home in the 2300 block of the Peter uh, John Pratter Road in Ward 4. The applicant had with withdrawn the, the request. Item 10, take appropriate action on EX 0820-0088, a request by Towerland Company LLC for an exception to allow a 10 year extension of an existing borrow pit in the 1100 block of East Lincoln Road in Ward 3. I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Ms. Hyatt. Ms. Tone. This property is in the South Lake Charles area and encompasses approximately 325 acres of agricultural land. In 2016, the applicant received approval to excavate five borrow pits for a total of 244 acres for a period of three years. In October 2019, the applicant received director's approval to allow a one-year extension, which expired September of this year. Since no work has been performed at this time, the applicant is requesting a time extension of 10 years. Because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends the request be granted with the following conditions that the development must be in accordance with section 26-122-1H4I through XII of the Parish Code of Ordinances, that the exception is approved for 10 years from date of approval, the permit is subject to a gravity drainage approval, that a bond in the amount of $125,000 is required prior to permitting, that the 100-foot offset with berm be extended south to serve as a buffer between the excavation operations and the neighboring residents, and that said berm must be constructed prior to the start of off-site hauling from Part B as shown on the submitted site plan, that ingress and egress be limited to East Lincoln Road access point only, that hours of operation be limited to Monday to Monday through, Friday, through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., that a five-foot hog wire fence with a one-foot barbed wire on top for a total of six feet be installed around the perimeter of the property, and that a runoff management plan will be required unless appropriate waiver is granted by the Division of Engineering. Thank you, Ms. Tunnan. Um, again, we'll offer the applicant to add to anything uh, involving the staff's presentation. Again, there are no blue cards on this item. Um, any questions or comments on this matter by the board? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I got a question for staff. In 10 years, and that's the maximum according to our ordinance, 10 year extension on the bar uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that's just what they were requesting. We uh, don't have a limit. No, no sir. Well, the limit, the limit right now is, uh, is 
it's a three-year period plus a one-year extension. So they've, they've already exhausted that. But now they're asking for an additional 10 years. All right. Thank you, sir. And, and this pit, uh, these pits were really for um, the construction of the industrial projects. Uh, and I think they're just trying to anticipate maybe when that may happen or if it ever happens. Yep. Uh, the stipulations that you have now, were they in, the uh, in his first request? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Any other questions or comments by board? Uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. With, I know there's a lot of changing going on currently and has gone over the last three years. In 10 years, with this thing having that much leniency, how does that fall if we if we come up with something as they perish, I know the drainage is a big issue and it's a big change that's happened. What if something like that happens in the next five to six years? Will they have to fall in line with any new ordinances or new laws or new items that come into effect that will affect that property? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I may have to ask our legal legal. <laughs> well, it's a tough question, and also just it depends. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what that might be. Um, and again, I don't want to. If the board doesn't have any questions for the applicant, I think the applicant is here. Um, but but that open ended, I really can't couldn't tell you. Okay. And the reason I'm asking, I mean, he had a three and one year extension instead of a ten. Can we go a three and a one year extension or something? to bring it more in line with the changes that's taking place currently in our parish and will be taking place over the next five to 10 years. If you want to vary uh, or deviate from what is being requested, I, I suggest you ask the, the, the applicant to come in and, and comment on these things. Okay. I, I mean, I would. Yes, yeah, I think the applicant's here. No, that's, that's, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Little. Uh, less than. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Tom Gale, address of 713 Kirby Street, Lake Charles. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Tower Land. Um, the, as I understand what I'm monitoring in the hallway, the questions about the term, uh, the idea on this is permit, you know, these pits are, are set up, as Mr. Crane said, is the, the idea is for one of the, the mega projects. Hopefully that will be coming along in the near future. Obviously, it has not taken place on the east side of the river as it has on the west side, but the idea is to be prepared and ready. Uh, it is my appreciation what we're doing today is simply the exception to allow for the, the zoning classification. Uh, they have not pulled a permit. So I would anticipate that when the permit gets pulled is when we're gonna have to, you, know, you probably wanna do your drainage, probably even your road bond and some of the other stuff at the time the actual permit for the pit or pits gets pulled. And it may, not, it may be at different times. It may not be at the same time. Uh, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Gale is correct on that. Uh, obviously, they would have to meet these stipulations, but if there's any other ordinance that may be passed that could affect this, uh, if they haven't received a permit at the time, they could be subject to that. Okay. That's reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Gale. Any other questions for Mr. Gale? I think he had a question on the on the ten year period. Oh. I, I was just. I think you answered it. If they if they do it in eight years or four years or two years or if they never do it, then they they fall with anything that falls in line. And it appears that they haven't pulled a permit. So all the new drainage and all the new policies that have come effect in the last two years, they fall underneath these procedures. They, so they could, yes, sir. That's, that pretty much answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gale. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments by the board? Ms. Christie, roll call vote. Mr. Little? Yes. Mr. Dubrock? Yes. Mr. Wiggins? Yes. Ms. Cobb? Yes. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Ms. Galicia? Yes. Mr. Vincent? Yes. Ms. Whiney? Yes. Ms. Hyatt? Yes. Mr. Porsche? Yes. 10 par. Motion passes.
Item 11, take appropriate action on RZ-0720-0171, a request by Oak Run LLC to rezone from single family residential R1 to mixed residential R2 to allow residential development on lots 1 through 12 of Oak Run subdivision single family and manufactured homes and to amend ordinance number 6885 to remove stipulations one through four in accordance with the revised subdivision plat in the 800 block of Manchester Road in Ward 8. I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Ms. Hyatt, Ms. Tun. This property is located in the Manchester area, and in 2017, the board approved a rezoning from unzoned property to single-family residential to allow single-family residential homes on 40 lots within the future Oak Run subdivision phase one. When the subdivision had preliminary plat approval, it was approved for smaller lots with alley loading and stick built homes. At this time, the developer intends to increase the lot sizes and reduce the number of lots in phase one. Due to the larger lot sizes, this allows the developer to eliminate the alley. If approved, this would allow the developer to place manufactured homes on the northern 12 lots within the future subdivision. Because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the following conditions. That the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development, provided that the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during the development, and that the development adhere to stormwater best management practices. Also, our office has received numerous phone calls, and you have a packet from um, a petition of all the opposition that they submitted. Thank you, Ms. Tun. Before going any further, I'd like to recognize uh, the two police jurors in our room. Joining us this evening, Mr. Anthony Barty and Mr. Eddie Lewis. Thank you all for joining us. Um, on this particular item, we do have four blue cards. At this time, I guess the, the, we can invite the applicant up to add to the staff presentation. Mr. Chairman, are the four yes, blue sir. cards all in opposition? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> As the applicant comes in, if we have four blue cards in opposition, we'll, each speaker will be limited to two and a half minutes. Thank you, sir. State your name and address. Hi, good evening. Uh, Chris Corey, uh, 1424 Ryan Street, Bricks and Mortar Real Estate Company, here uh, representing the applicant, Oak Run LLC. Okay. Um, I'd just like to thank all the members of the commission tonight. Um, uh, I just wanted to hit a few high points regarding the development. Uh, I think it was previously stated that we had a, an approval for a higher density plan that was uh, with alley access. And, and again, just trying to adapt with the demands in the market, but also minimize the impact on, uh, on, on the area and, and drainage and everything else that we, we decided to make a, a lower density plan. Um, also to provide um, th that would allow mobile homes uh, on a portion of this property. And, and again, we felt like it was consistent with some of the surrounding zoning designations, some be, being very mixed of agriculture, industrial. There's a mobile home park ad adjacent to the uh, um, adjoining neighborhood. And um, we just felt like it was a, an appropriate use for the property. If there's any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do have any questions? Can, can, if I could just maybe point out one other thing, I think this property is 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 unique in the sense that it it was formerly um, not zoned at all, and so if had it had it been zoned for its previous use of agriculture, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here requesting anything. Our our, our use would be permitted as of right, and so it's just unique that it wasn't zoned, and then was zoned R1. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Oh, Jake, I'm sorry. Question for the applicant. You mentioned some mobile homes nearby. Uh, yes. Uh, so it's a, it's a, I don't know how many units, but it's a large mobile home park that's 
uh, adjacent to the um, the subdivision that's, that's across right the street. Right there to the right. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. All right. That's my only question for okay. me. That I believe just is in the process of completing a large expansion as well. You can tell from that aerial. Uh, there's additional infrastructure going in now, and they're so expanding. So you as the applicant or, or who you're representing rezone this from agricultural to single family, or you purchased it as single family? It's, um, it was rezoned R1, it was zoned R1 okay. with a higher density. Right. And then again, the, the decision was made based on market demand to go back to to go to R2 and reduce the density, okay. but then also change the type of but dwelling. But its previous zoning was A1? Uh, no, it was, zone. again, very unique. It, it had no zoning designation okay. at all. Okay. Um, but again, I would just like to urge everybody to consider how critical affordable housing is needed sure. in the market sure. today. Okay, that's all I have. Questions that happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Blue cards. Um, Rusty Stoops, Rob McCorkadale, James Gatlin, and Mr. Tony Guillory. Your, your, your pick. Choose one first. Okay, in this order, say Mr. Stoops. <laughs> I'm not Rusty Stutes. <laughs> uh, okay, you're not, the second card. <laughs> Rob McCorkadell. Rusty asked me to, uh, to take his time. Uh, obviously, uh, those of you who know me, you're going to be surprised to know that I'm going to be uncharacteristically brief, uh, but I'm going to try to wrap it up. Rusty and I represent the neighborhood. Uh, the, um, our, our particular client is Mr. Gatlin, who's here, and he'll be here to answer any questions that you have of the neighborhood. Uh, of the residential neighborhood in the narrative. You can look at the picture on the screen. You can see there's a rather large residential neighborhood on uh, Manchester Road. When we first learned about this proposed change, there were some parts of it that we liked. Um, we liked the idea of increasing the lot size, because I think that was really, if you're familiar with the history of this dispute about this stretch of land, you'll understand that this went to court at one point. The big dispute the neighbors had was we want we want like housing, like our, like our homes, and we, we want it to be uh, uh, zoned similarly. And what originally was proposed was, I think, 64 lots at some point. And now the proposal is to change those 64 lots, I think, to 18, with the top or the northerly 12 being zoned S2. So the fact that you're increasing the lot size, that's a plus, and we think that's a great idea, and we have no objection to that. But the idea of going from... S1 to S2 now, when you finally made the lots marketable, is puzzling. Um, the lots couldn't sell before because the developer never poured the alleyways, he never poured the, uh, the curb cuts on Manchester Road, so he could never sell those lots because he never did the infrastructure work that you required him to do. So the property's been sitting idle, not because it's not marketable as S1, but because the developer chose not to. So now, to make the lots a full acre in size, which is comparable to the residential lots you'll see on the screen, it seems unnecessary to take that and down to an S2. If you're going to make the lots big and marketable, let's sell them as S1s where they'll make more money and they'll protect the land value of the neighborhood of the people in the estates uh, uh, that Mr. Gatlin in that subdivision where he lives. So I guess our formal opposition would be to the changing of the zoning, but we, we would consent to the, the larger lot size. And I think actually that solves our problem. Once he, once he develops those lots as S1, because they're larger lots, they'll sell. Now I know he mentioned that there were some trailer parks in the vicinity, and that's true. But there are no trailer parks. There's no way to get to a trailer park from Manchester Road. You have to go to Highway 90. And I think it's particularly unfair to the neighbors to put an S2 development directly across the street from an S1 development. I know it happens in other places, but right now, you know, a lot was made of previously about what it used to be. It's S1 right now. It is single residential housing right now. That is the current zoning. He wants to change that to S2. Thank you, Mr. McCorkadale. Thank you. We reached oh, our time limit. I'm sorry. I thought I had my time and Mr. Stutz's. I apologize. Uh, if, if Rusty's waiving his time, uh, I would recommend the board do allow Mr. Okay. Corkdale another minute and a half. 
Was he not going to speak? Yeah, that's what he, he filled out a card. But yes, he just sent me and he said, I'm not talking. Okay. You go take our time. I, I, I apologize. I thought I made that said that when I walked in. So it just seems unfair. And I, I am wrapping it up. And I do appreciate you telling me. Um, it seems unfair to put an S2 development directly across the street from an S1 when it's currently zoned S1. And we've never had an opportunity to see if it would develop as S1 because the developer chose not to install the infrastructure that you instructed him to do. Now, Mr. Gatlin is here. I would like to submit, and I don't know who I'd give this to. Uh, but this is an affidavit Mr. Uh, Mr. Gatlin prepared. Uh, it is the petition of all the neighbors in the neighborhood who are opposed to this for those reasons. He'll be here and he's willing to speak if you want to ask him. We thought you might want to ask him questions. Um, so I'll, if you don't have any questions for me. Yes, yes sir. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Rob McCorkadale. I, I thought I said that when I started. I apologize. Rob. I apologize. I'm Rob McCorkadale. I'm, I'm an attorney. Uh, I work with Stutes and Laverne. I'm of counsel of their firm, and Rusty and I are representing the neighborhood in this uh, planning and zoning issue. Thank you, very much. Thank you, and I'm sorry about that. We're good? Questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all so much. The next card is for Mr. James Gatlin. Good evening. My name is James Gatlin. I live at 1425 Manchester Road, Iowa, Louisiana, and I am a resident of East Town Estates. I am here to answer any questions that you may have. Does anybody have any questions off the top of your head for Mr. Gatlin? Mr. Gatlin, do you have anything you want to share with us with respect to this? Because you do have a blue in opposition card, figure you may want to say a few words. Well, there were quite a few things that uh, the developer showed on his applications that we did have uh, some objections to, especially concerning drainage and a couple of the other things. But when we look at the application that he submitted, he showed a retention pond in there, which Page 92 on ours, which would be directly across from uh, the fifth house in East Town Estates. If he says that it do, will not have any impact to the drainage on that end, we'd like to know, first of all, what is he capturing there? Surface runoff water or what? And if so, both Manchester Road and McCowan Road which he is looking to put this water into both floods. Big, big issue there right now. Okay. And you said it's across from the fifth home? Yes. On, uh, on, I mean, on, 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 on well, East Town Estates. From the north end. Of it. Right, from the north end. That's correct. Do we have that in our drawing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, on the site plan, you'll see um, uh, there is a, uh, a drainage detention area The ditch that he is proposing to put that water into flows directly across McCowan Roads. And any large rainfall, McCowan Roads floods anyway. So why would he be putting more effluent into that particular ditch? Anything else, Mr. Gatlin? Oh, just here to answer any questions that you all may have. Any questions for Mr. Gatlin by any of the board members? Thank you, Mr. Gatlin. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, on a detention pond, uh, that's going to have to be uh, reviewed and approved through our engineering department in accordance with the um, parish standards. So just want to make that clear. Okay. 
Wes, uh, are they going to have to approve that retention pond size before they can proceed, or are they going to be required to make a certain size retention pond? Uh, yes, sir. They'll have okay. to design it. Um, they'll have to design it so that uh, whatever runoff is generated from the subdivision uh, or that goes into the uh, roadside ditches for Manchester Road or, um, uh, or the other, uh, McAllen, I'm sorry. Um, if, if there's actual water that goes into this drainage or detention pond, all of that will have to be engineered and calculated to determine uh, so there's no additional run, uh, no additional impact to so that drainage the drainage lateral. So the applicant has no idea how big a pond he's going to have to have or anything like that. They're drawing it in right now, but that that's still. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they've done any preliminary numbers on or their calculations at this point, but um, uh, engineering has to approve all that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mr. Crane. Yes, sir. That uh, that drainage ditch. I don't remember getting that, what is that, 387? McGowan Road comes off of 387. Oh, 397 or Fruget? 397, right. Yes, sir. Now, that drainage ditch goes, that's a big, deep, deep, uh, deep ditch. It goes all the way into the town of Highway. Yes, sir. Uh, and it flows? Well, again, um, the engineers who are designing all of this, are, they're going to have to look at any of the off-site drainage impact that may be coming into that drainage system or, or that's generated off of this site. So all that has to be calculated. Okay. And answer my question. <clears throat> no further questions? Um, yes, sir. In regards to the ordinance that they're wanting to get rid of item one through four. Uh, it appears to me this is what's done, I guess, the police jury, whatever it came before them to be zoned, they had these put in there in regards to the parking. Uh, I remember that they didn't want to put too many driveways on one road. They didn't want to do the alley to eliminate that. It sounds like it's, you're, gonna, you're still going to have something 20 some odd driveways coming on into that engine. Is this something we need to worry us here on our land usage or? Well, the way, the way they've um, designed it is they, they meet the existing minimum driveway distance requirements, okay. according, to engineer, uh, according to our ordinance. So yes, they may have additional driveways along Manchester Road. In the original plan, since they had so many lots that they were doing, it okay. was engineering said, you can't have that many, you need to go down to three, and that's what they approved. But in this particular layout, since they're widening the lots and making them so that they meet our minimum standard, they can have that. Oh, okay, yeah. right, okay, that's what I was trying to, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. State your name and thank, address for the record. Thank you. I'm Tony Giori, 128 Kingsley Street. I'm here to ask you to not rezone this to mixed residential. I just want to show you, Tom, if you could bring up some of the houses for me, some of the houses in the area, just to show you. And they are going through some things right now. Everybody is, is going through some things. This is some of the houses in the area. Lost the whole roof. You can go to the next one, Tom. My time is going to be short. I'm just here asking you to not change this to mixed residential. That's, you can see the houses. They have some nice houses in this area. And to put a trailer right by down the street just would not be right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. OK. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Before you recall the applicant, there was a blue, blue card turned in after the item was read. Um, which typically would not be allowed under your rules. However, the, the opponents have not used a lot of 10 minutes, so um, if, if you and your discretion want to allow the speaker to speak, or if the board wants to take a vote on it, however you want to do that, or disallow the speaker, that is up to you. Okay. Anyone opposed to having this speaker speak? 
You may none will hear. Then, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest um, Brad Evans as the speaker be given two minutes. Okay, thank you. If we can get Mr. Evans. Thank you. I apologize. I was supposed to fill this out early. My name is Brad Evans, 6709 Bobo Link Circle, Iowa, Louisiana. And I just wanted to just add to some of the other issues that some of the uh, neighbors are uh, complaining about. And, you know, one of the things I want to thank you guys, you voted down the actual trailer park in question uh, that kind of borders my property on Highway 90 East. Uh, the the, the uh, police jury actually overturned your decision. Our biggest thing is we're, we're surrounded, we're boxed in by trailers. Nothing against trailers at all, but from a property value standpoint, you know, you don't want nobody driving down Manchester Road to go into an area that is comprised of houses 200, 250 plus in value. So it, it's just, you know, the idea of, of wherever you come in at, whether it would be on Manchester or McCowan, I mean, on 90 or McCowan Road, you know, people are having a look at this. And some of the ones that are on McCowan Road right now, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's not a pretty sight. And this is before the hurricanes. So, and, and unfortunately right now, a lot of our neighbors are not even in the neighborhood because of the destruction. I mean, last I heard there was gonna be 12 homes that were gonna have to be torn down in their neighborhood. That's a lot. These people aren't there. These people, I'm the old, three of us are here. When this was first on the agenda, it was probably 50 of us. So I don't think the representation by the neighborhood is, is really like it should be because people are not here. So I, I really thank you for your time. I just wanted to just expound on what's been said, uh, let you guys know that, I mean, the last time I fought this, it was, I counted 1,200 trailers that provided maybe 50,000 in tax dollars to the parish, where when you overturned the R1 on the property on Highway 90 East, you know, with the potential for a million dollars in tax prop, uh, tax dollars. So, you know, the money aspect of it, I like the fact that it's an acre, but if you're going to put an acre property, you know, I like to see houses there, not mobile homes, because that really box us in. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Hi, Chris Corey, returning. Appreciate, once again, all the members of the commission. Um, I'd just like to add to all the comments that were made uh, this evening that uh, I, I understand um, when, when there's change and people want to resist change, and, and typically the, the argument you're given is, is, is traffic, uh, drainage, devaluation of property. Um, and I appreciate Mr. McCorkendale's statement that, that it's this new lower density is, is preferred, going from 64 lots to 20 lots. Um, so we know we're going to, with this new plan, we're going to reduce traffic. Uh, we know we're going to reduce our drainage impact. And, and then in response to the gentleman's comments about the drainage um, uh, detention pond that was shown previously, I, I believe that this... Um, approval is going to be subject to uh, adhering to all the uh, drainage impact requirements as well. Um, um, and so, and then your other, your other argument, devaluation of property, I think it's, it's, it's clear looking at this, at this map that you have adjoining a very high density, uh, large number of mobile home units. Um, and, and so, I think it's clear that there's not a further negative impact. Um, and, and, and furthermore, just the, the crisis that we're in now with affordable housing and people that need housing quickly. You know, and right now with all the disaster recovery work, um, you know, there's just only so much labor present to do the work, and so people need to return now. Um, and so by allowing the mobile homes, it will allow for, for people to return faster. 
I, I want to also add, as, as part of this development, we will be, um, you know, we will we will have a strict set of, of deed restrictions, as far as the uh, to protect all the values within this development, and also from a standpoint of of, of devaluation of property, we're only asking for a portion of this property to allow for mobile homes. So even as a development entity, we are not concerned about being the the, the ability to put mobile homes on a portion of these lots negatively impacting the, the remaining lots. So again, I'd just like you to urge the members of the commission to um, follow the, the, um, the, the staff recommendations and uh, consider approving the project as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Does any of the board member, do any of the board members have a question for Mr. Corey or a comment? I've got one question. Yes, sir. In light of what I've heard and what I've seen, if the developer was to put uh, not uh, trailer, what's the other? Manufactured homes. Manufactured homes would somewhat comply with the area, wouldn't it, instead of trailer? Um, well, so what's the question again? It's I'm sorry. between manufactured homes and trailers, right? Well, there's no uh, a manufactured home. It's a that is built to a HUD standard, a housing and urban development standard. So, um, I think the word is used interchangeably. Uh, you know, trailer homes, but ma manufactured homes are is the standard industry term that's used today. But they're built. They they're built to a the HUD, uh, federal HUD standard. The, the, um, one more addition: these lots will be priced around fifty thousand dollars, and so, and, and again, these deed restrictions will require, you know, certain skirting, landscaping, carports, hard surface drive area. Um, it's it's again not to be confused with like the. Your typical mobile home park, if you will. This is uh, these are these are large lots. Uh, it'd be probably expected for those to have accessory buildings that are traditional um, framing and foundations for the accessory buildings. Again, these are exceed 200 feet of frontage, and uh, when you consider the, the number of, of mobile homes that we're requesting, it's a, a, a slither compared to the adjacent development. Any other questions for Mr. Corey? Thank you, Mr. Corey. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions? Mr. Mr. President, I do have a I have a question for the staff. Yes, sir. Where, if this thing gets approved Thursday night, gets rezoned, how far out are you in him breaking ground on that piece of property? What are, where are we? I mean, I'm just, are we a month or six months or a year? I know there's a lot of work that y'all have to do, but I'm just, just curious. Peter? During the engineering phase of the Oh, okay. Well, you, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I I just <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they have submitted their subdivision plats. They've gotten preliminary plat approval and their uh, runoff management plan approved. They're in the engineering stage right now. So. It could take six months or maybe a little longer. It just depends on how quick they operate. Okay. So these are not going to be homeowners. These are going to be renters. They're going to be rental property. Mm -hmm. I think they're selling. They're selling. Them. Yes, ma'am. These are lots that will be for sale. That was my understanding. It was going to be sold. Mr. Portion. Question for the staff, and then a few comments that might generate some discussion. Um, according to this aerial view I'm seeing is that construction of this new uh, recently approved manufactured park that's on the east side here that's correct okay uh, and you know uh, one of the uh, homeowners said you know they're boxed in with manufactured homes and you know as as a single-family home uh, there I could understand the concerns but um, I guess my concern is approving, in his own words, you know, boxing everything around this property, which then establishes, uh, and the zoning map 
here is, is really interesting. You don't see this many colors usually <laughs> on a single page. Right. But um, I think they're doing, in looking forward, I think they're doing them a favor by decreasing the density because we've got, um, we've got this, uh, is that multifamily, the, the RM? Yeah. Multifamily that's already uh, set in place that could be a pretty high density development. It certainly could, yes. Um, you've got behind to the, to the west, is that, is, if I read my letter, that's uh, I-1. That is correct. Which, um, that could be. A lot of stuff. A lot of things. So, you know, when I look at this map, I, I'm, I see potential for, you know, that, that's a much greater potential to hurt, hurt home values as far as single family than a nice little R2 development. So I, I understand the staff's recommendation to approve, I, I just, as I'm looking here, you know, uh, we, we've set the precedent that uh, uh, manufactured homes in this area are are approved. So, I just always have a problem with telling someone that's just because you're on the east side, yes, and west side, no, on the same street and road. But uh, it's just, that's all I, all my comments, or questions. Yes. The other, uh, the other property is currently zoned agricultural too, so you can have a mobile home on agricultural property. Right here, yes, correct. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting map. Any other questions from the staff? Being done, Ms. Christie, roll call vote, please. Ms. Cobb. No. Mr. Little? No. Mr. Porsche? Yes. Mr. Williams? No. Ms. Hyatt? No. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Mr. Vincent? No. Ms. Galicia? No. Ms. Whiney? No. Mr. Dubrock? No. Eight against and two for. Motion fails. Item 12, take action, appropriate action on RZ-0720-0173. A request by Alvin Stevens et al. to rezone from light commercial C1 to multifamily residential RM to allow residential development for duplexes at 1179 North Perkins Ferry Road in Ward 1. I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Motion by Ms. Dickerson, second by Coach Williams. Ms. Tunn. This property is located in the Moss Bluff area and encompasses 1.37 acres of light commercial zone property. The applicant is requesting to rezone to multifamily residential to allow four duplexes. The duplexes will consist of 1,176 square feet two bedrooms, two baths with brick exterior and attached garages. The proposed development will comply with the corridor overlay standards. In 2017, the applicant was approved to allow three duplexes on the track directly north of this proposed development. Because the proposed development is consistent with the character of the area, the staff recommends the request be granted with the following conditions. That the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development provided that the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during the development. That all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development and the light source cannot be visible to the adjacent properties. That the development adhere to stormwater best management practices and that a runoff management plan will be required unless appropriate waiver is granted by the Division of Engineering. Thank you, Ms. Tun. Um, I guess we'll offer the opportunity for the applicant if they want to add to any of this, if they're present, and they're not being present. Uh, we have no blue cards on this item. Any questions or comments by the board or the staff regarding this item? There being none, all those in favor, state aye. aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, take appropriate action on RZ-0820-0173. 
a request by Robert Belisle to rezone from Agricultural A1 to Light Industrial I1 to allow Light Industrial Development Contractor Shop and Storage Yard in the 800 block of Ravier Road in Ward 4. I will entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Ms. Hyatt. Ms. Tun. This property is located in the South Sulphur area and encompasses approximately 1.47 acres of agricultural zone property. The applicant is requesting to be rezoned to light industrial to allow a contractor shop and storage yard. Because the proposed development is consistent with the character of the area, the staff recommends the request be granted with the following conditions. That the development adhere to the site plan on file with the Division of Planning and Development provided that the director or designee may authorize adjustments to the site plan in light of technical or engineering considerations discovered during development. That all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development and the light source cannot be visible to the adjacent properties. That screening must be provided in accordance with section 26-50 of the Parish Code of Ordinances prior to final electrical approval. That the development adhere to stormwater best management practices. That a runoff management plan will be required unless appropriate waiver is granted by the Division of Engineering. Also, this case has opposition and you have a packet of a petition in front of you. We have two blue cards in opposition as well. Mr. Chair, uh, we do not believe the applicant is here. Okay. Yes, there is a packet that y'all were handed. Um, the heading on is RZ-0820-0174. Um, that being the case, I guess we will hear first from David Heddens. My name is David Heddens. I live at 845 Swallow in Sulphur. And uh, uh, my, my wife Kathy and I uh, live ne next to this property in question. And we've lived there for 28 years. And uh, you know we've enjoyed the, the peace and quiet of the neighborhood. And uh, we have many children in our neighborhood. We have uh, 16 under the age of 15 just in our block of, of neighborhood. And uh, and you know it's it's uh it's really good to see the kids. They they play up and down the streets riding their bikes, and you know it's not uncommon to see you know the younger kids with uh, fishing nets catching tadpoles and frogs. And uh, you know this this property that uh, is wanting to change to commercial is uh is sandwiched right in between. I don't know if y'all have that slide that I turned in that shows uh, right at the neighborhood. No? Okay. So some of you guys have that. And you can see that the, the, the block that's in red is the one that's uh, requested to change to a commercial. And you can see all the other blocks that are in, in blue are homes with families of uh, young children. And, uh, you know, and, and we all know that, uh, uh, what is it called, a contractor shop and storage yard. That usually means large trucks with trailers and increased traffic and no telling what kind of characters are going to be in, in brought into our neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly can't imagine all of the children playing safely in that type of envir environment. Uh, you know, I know that there is a, a property just to the west of that that is commercial. Um, but if you look at the, that map, it shows, you know, it has wooded property on the east side and an open field, a big, large open field on the west side. So there's really not much of an impact with a the neighborhood there. But this one is right in the middle of, of all of our families and our neighborhood. And, uh, you know, we really don't want that. We, we are uh, opposed to that. Um, now, I want to be clear, we're not opposed to industrial development, but not in the middle of the neighborhood and clearly not uh, at the risk of uh, sacrificing our children's safety. So I would, I would urge you guys 
to you know put yourselves in our shoes and see would you like a contractor shop directly next door to you so i would appreciate it mr Hedden, you did complete this map correct this yes i did okay are these homes that you have uh, they're they're not rentals these are only no these are all homes okay. yes Any other questions for Mr. Hedges? There may not. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How y'all doing? I'm Patrick Babez. I live at 830 Swallow Road, Sulphur, Louisiana, 70665. Um, I've lived there for about 14 years with my wife and kids. And Mr. David hit on pretty much a lot of the points um, that the way I feel. So I'll try not to be too redundant. Um, but, you know, our neighborhood's in unanimous opposition to this. Um, we ran a petition through there, and every single person in the neighborhood signed it to oppose this rezone. Um, the lot is, is surrounded on three sides by residential homes with kids. Um, the majority of the lot fronts Birdwell, I mean Birdwell Street, which is in the neighborhood. Um, the usable frontage on Ravier is, is very small, and there's a huge um, metal utility pole on the Ravier frontage, and it's got big guide wires coming down. So I, I don't know how... You know, they'd even be able to get in and out a whole lot, really use a whole lot of that Ravier frontage. And if they use that Birdwell frontage, well, I mean, that really puts them right there where the kids are, you know. Um, I can think of six or seven kids under the age of 10, they ride their little bicycles up and down Birdwell and Swallow every day, you know, going to each other's houses and just playing. It's a good little neighborhood. Um, we all know each other, help each other out, look out for each other, you know. and. Like Mr. David said, I just asked that y'all put yourselves in our shoes and how would y'all feel if, if there was a industrial lot popping up in the neighborhood, you know? Um, that's really all I got, guys. I don't want to take up too much y'all's time. If, if y'all don't have any questions for me, that's all I got. Any questions for Mr. Bebas? Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. Okay. And the applicant is not here. Um, any questions or comments by the board regarding this? Mr. Porsche. Just a question for the staff. I'm just making sure I'm seeing this map correctly. Everything on this east side is already zoned C1 commercial, just not developed. Correct? Yes, sir. Right. We've got heavy industrial here just to the east, light industrial to the south, the same thing on the west. I, and I, I, you know, I, I do understand the, the opposition, but uh, as far as land use, I, I do see the staffs and uh, just the general opinion that, uh, you know, this is not spot zoning and the precedent has been set in this area for light industrial and commercial, heavy industrial. Uh, so I, I do I do understand the the recommendation to approve. Uh, I just wanted to make make that comment. Any other comments or questions for the staff? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, make an amendment to the recommendation that a eight foot wooden dog eared fence be put on three sides of this property should this uh, applicant, if this request passes. Okay, we'll have to vote on that. We would. If it, if it. Mr. Little's making a motion to add a stipulation. Is there a second? Is there a second to Mr. Little's sure. motion? Second by Mr. Porsche. Any discussion on that motion? Just to amend and add the stipulation. Any? All those in favor, state aye. 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 All opposed? 
Well, at this point, you're, you're, right. you're adding a stipulation. You're, right now, all the vote is to add a stipulation. Right. Right. And the, the only thing we're doing is adding a stipulation, which I believe has passed. So right. now you will take the vote on the, the main motion. Okay. Okay. And the main motion would be to recommend zoning with all the stipulations, including the one just added. Mr. Porsche, would the applicant be tied to this current site plan? Some of the neighbors had the concern about Birdwell Road, and as it's drawn, the entrance is off of Ravier. So I just want to make sure that that it, we are approving it with the entrance off of Ravier, not Birdwell. That's and correct. That, and that would have to come before us to change that? Yes, sir. Okay. It would have to go before the police jury as well. Yes, right. Okay. Right. Any further questions? Being none, Ms. Christie, roll call vote. Mr. Vincent? No. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Ms. Galicia? No. Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Whiney? No. Ms. Cobb? No. Ms. Hyatt? Yes. Mr. Porsche? Yes. Mr. Dubrock? Mr. Little? No. Four, 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 and six against. Motion fails. Item 14. The next item on the agenda is to advise that the police jury took the following action on August 20th, 2020, with reference to the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Board from August 18, 2020 meeting. Mitchell Huff Power Highway 101, Planning and Zoning recommended approval, police jury approved. Chet Huff Power Highway 101, police, uh, Planning and Zoning recommended approval, police jury approved. Oak Run LLC, Manu uh, Manchester Road, Planning and Zoning deferred for 30 days. Item 15, the next item on the agenda is to advise that the next regularly scheduled planning and zoning meeting will be held Tuesday, November 17th, 2020. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Hock, uh, Ms. Dickerson. Second. Second by Mr. Dubrock. Meeting is adjourned.